Okay, so for number four, we want to provide either a proof or a counterexample of each of these statements. <clears throat> so for A, um, we're going to, the statement is, suppose that for all positive integers x, that x squared plus x plus 41 is prime. So what we're going to do here is we're going to produce an object in the universe, because the universe is positive integers, so we're going to say, um, 41 is a positive integer. So 41 is um, in the universe. And then we're going to say, so 41 squared plus 41 plus 41 must be prime. So 41 squared, when we do this, squared plus 41 plus 41, this is going to give us, let's see what that is going to be. Um, it's going to give us 1763 which is equal to 41 times 43. So 1, so 1763 is prime and not prime, which is a contradiction. Therefore, for all, therefore, it is not the case, or we're going to say, therefore, um, there exists a positive integer such that x squared uh, plus x plus 41 is not prime. So we have um, we have disproved it, right? We have shown a counterexample. Okay. So for b, we're doing uh, the universal x. So we're saying suppose uh, for all x there exists y such that x plus y is equal to zero. So because this is a universal statement, we have to just produce um, produce an object. Well, not produce an object, but um, show that it, it applies for any any object in that universe. So we're going to say, uh, let x be a real number. So we're assuming nothing about x except that it belongs to the universe, right? We're not naming it specifically. We're just saying um, just a random member of the universe. Um, the real numbers include the positives and the negatives. Thus, minus x is also a real number. Now, because we're saying there exists, so now we're going to produce a specific element. So we're going to say, let y be equal to minus x, right? So then we have that y plus x, sorry, we have that x, x plus y is going to be equal to minus x uh, plus minus x, which is going to be equal to zero, right? So our conclusion is going to be, therefore, for all x belonging to the set of real numbers, there exists a y such that x, x plus y is equal to 0. So we're basically saying, hey, um, the multiplicative, sorry, the additive inverse exists, right? Um, for c, oops, for c, we're going to have that. We want to prove that for all x, for all y, if x is greater than 1 and y is greater than 0, it implies that y to the power of x is greater than x. So um, we're going to say, we're going to prove this one, we're going to show a counterexample. So we're going to say, suppose that for all real numbers x, y, um, suppose that for all real numbers, actually I'm going to say, let x, y be real numbers. Suppose that x is greater than 1 and y is greater than 0. Furthermore, suppose that y to the power of x is going to be greater than x. So we're saying, we're saying, hey, assume that this statement is true, right? Assume that p implies q, that p is true and q is true. So, um, what, what are we going to say? So we're going to say that um, let, actually, we're going to say that y is equal to 0 0.1 is a real number and 2 is a real number. So we're going to say that, and 2 is a real number. So we're going to say let y be equal to 0 0.1 and let x be equal to 2. So um, we're going to have that y to the power of, actually we're going to have that 0 0.1 to the power of 2 is greater than 
2, right? So 0 0.1 to the power of 2 is going to be 0 0.01 is greater than 2, which is a contradiction since 0 0.01 is less than 2. So we have shown that, therefore, there exists real numbers x, y, such that x is greater than 1, y is greater than 0, and uh, y to the power of x, y to the power of x, is not less than x. So we have uh, produced a pair that, we have produced a counter example. Um, so that is it for item C. Now, um, item D, we wanna uh, we have the statement that for integers A, B, C, if A divides B, C, then either A divides B or A divides C. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna um, provide a counterexample. So we have to provide um, we have to conjure elements that are within the universe that proves that statement wrong. So we're gonna say let A, B, C be integers. Now we're going to produce those elements. So we're gonna say let A equals 6, b equal 2, and c is equal to 3, right? So we're going to do that bc is going to be equal to 2 times 3, which is going to be equal to 6. Um, 6 is equal to 1 times 6, so 6, so 6 divides 6, right? So actually, so 6 divides 6. Therefore, a divides bc. Um, and then we have that 6 does not divide 3, since 6 is greater than 3. And similarly, 6 does not divide 2, since 6 is greater than 2. Um, therefore, A does not divide B, and A does not divide C. Does not divide C, right? Thus, there exists integers A, B, C with A equals 6, B equals 2, and C equals 3, such that A divides B, C, and A does not divide B, and does not divide C. So we have shown the counterexample that we needed. Um, so now let's go to item E, where item E we want to have that I uh, want to show that for integers a, b, c, and d, if a divides b minus c and a divides c minus d, then a divides b minus d. So we are going to say that um, so let a, b, c, d be integers. Um, we're going to say suppose that suppose that a divides b minus c and a divides c minus d. So if this is the case, then there exists integers uh, EF such that uh, B minus C is equal to um, AE and C minus D is equal, C minus D is going to be equal to, let's see, AF. Okay, so we want to show um, A divides B minus D, right? So we want to get to B minus D. So let's isolate B and let's isolate D so that we can subtract them. So B is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, C plus AE. And D is going to be equal to, uh, if I bring the D to the other side, it's going to give me C minus AF. Okay, so B minus D is going to be equal to um, C plus AE minus C minus AF, right? So B minus D is going to be equal to C plus AE minus C minus plus AF. And so B minus D is going to be equal to, the C's cancel out, AE plus AF, which is equal to, I'm going to factor out the A, E plus F. So E plus F is an integer, is an integer. So A divides B minus D. So we have shown that, and therefore our conclusion is, Therefore, or if A divides B minus C and A divides uh, C minus D, then A divides B minus D. So we have shown what we needed to show for item E. Let's do item F. So F, um, 
we have the statement for all positive real numbers x, x squared minus x is greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to say, uh, suppose, suppose that for all positive real numbers x, uh, x squared minus x is going to be greater than or equal to, um, to 0. I'm not sure why it's copying in that font. Let me just fix this. It's going to be equal to 0. Okay, so suppose that... Suppose that this is this is true, right? Um, now we're going to produce a counterexample. We're going to say um, let x is equal to 0 0.5 because 0 because 0 0.5 is a positive real number. So then we have that um, 0 0.5 squared minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 should be greater than or equal to 0, right? So if we do this, um, 0 0.5 squared is going to be 0.25 if we do this. So we have that 0 0.25 minus uh, 0 0.5 is greater than or equal to 0, and that means that we're going to have minus 0 0.25 is greater than or equal to 0, um, which is a contradiction, right? That's not true. So it must mean that our assumption must have been wrong. Therefore, um, there exists a positive real number x such that such that this thing is false. Such that um, this thing here is false. Okay. So we have um, provided a counter example here. Um, let's do item E. So oh, G. I mean. Um, same thing here, we're going to have that for all positive real numbers x, 2 to the power of x is greater than x plus 1. So we're going to uh, show a counterexample. So we're going to say suppose that for, for all, oops, suppose that for all positive real numbers x, 2 to the power of x is going to be greater than x plus 1. And we're going to say let x is equal to 1 because uh, 1 is a positive real number. Then 2 to the power of 1 uh, is greater than 1 than 1 plus 1. Oops, 1 plus 1. So 2 is going to be greater than greater than 2, which is a contradiction since 2 is equal to 2. Can't be, can't be greater than itself. So our conclusion is going to be that our assumption must have been false. So therefore, for all positive real numbers x, um, there, so I'm going to say actually, therefore, there exists a positive real number x such that this guy over here is false, such that this guy is false is false and that is it we have shown a um a counter example right um now we are going to do item h for h uh, we're going to say that uh it's a statement for every positive real number x <clears throat> there exists a positive real number y less than x with the property that for all positive real numbers z um, y, z is greater than or equal to z. Okay, so we're going to say let x, y, z be, um, be re positive real numbers. So we're going to say let, let, um, let y be less than x, right? Suppose that for all positive, for all z, y, z, is going to be greater than z. Actually, I'm going to say assume that that was better. So assume that assume that for all z. Okay. So now we're going to produce the counter example, right? Um, so we're going to say one half is a positive real number, and one is a positive real number with one half less than. 1, so let y equals to 1 half and x, and x is equal to 1, right? So we have just produced um, 
produce an object. And now we're going to show that um, there is a counter example. Um, so what we have here is that yz, so yz is, oops, yz is going to be greater than or equal to z. So uh, it means that one half, one half z, right, is going to be greater than or equal to z, um, which is a contradiction because z. Actually, I'm going to just divide this by z. So it means that because z is positive, um, it means that one half is going to be greater than or equal to one, which is a contradiction since one half is less than one. Therefore, there exists real numbers um, x, y with y less than x such that uh, it is not true that for all positive real numbers z, z, y, z is greater than z. So we have, um, we have falsified this universal statement. And let's go to item i. So item i may seem a bit tricky, but it's, it's, uh, it's actually very, very easy to do. So um, what is happening here is that we're doing, um, we want to prove that for every positive real number x, there exists a positive real number y with the property that if y is less than x, then for all positive real numbers z, yz is greater than z. So the whole point here is that we're saying for every positive real number x, there is a positive real number y such that, I'm going to go p implies P implies Q, such that if P then Q, where P is equal to Y is less than X and Q is equal to, uh, for all positive real numbers, Z, Y, Z is going to be greater than or equal to Z. Okay, so we're just trying to prove this conditional, right? And remember that a conditional is true in two situations, when P is true and Q is true, or when P is false. So if P is false, the conditional statement is automatically automatically true. So we're going to say let x be a real number and let y be a real number such that x is equal to y. Then, then uh, y is less than x is false. Therefore, if y is less than x, then for all positive real numbers z, y z is going to be greater than or equal to z. So um, this may seem confusing at first, but this is given that we're trying to prove this um, conditional statement, we're, we just have to, we're saying there exists a positive real number such that that conditional statement is true. So then we just um, we produce an object, a real number, such that P becomes false, and therefore the whole conditional statement is true. So that is it for item I.